I think the game was already changing, Bev, before this, in the sense that Ukraine is now winning on the battlefield. Uh, in the past six weeks, we're not talking about Ukraine defending against Russia. We're talking about Ukraine's counteroffensives that have not only taken territory in the east and south that Russia seized this year, but is now putting pressure on areas that Russia has controlled since 2014. Now, when Vladimir Putin responds to that by lobbing these missiles into civilian areas and tries to attack the infrastructure, what you then have is the response we're seeing, which is the international community saying, we will support Ukraine's air defense. So in a way, it is reinforcing the way that the game has changed by saying that Putin doesn't escape his predicament with his scorched earth strategy to level Ukraine. Yeah. Yet again, we saw, you know, this morning there are more uh, missiles that have hit Kiev, uh, again, infrastructure in other cities, also using these drones from Iran. Uh, what does it tell us about the Russian strategy? Well, first of all, what it tells you is that Russia has a severe shortage of supplies because they can't use their own drones, what we kind of call kamikaze drones, on the battlefield or against civilian areas. Uh, in terms of the strategy, there's a limit here in terms of what this can achieve because 60% of the kamikaze drones are being shot down by the existing Ukraine air defenses, let alone the bolstered ones that are coming up fairly soon. So the drones can, you know, wreak a bit of terror on civilian areas, as we have seen. They were used again in Kyiv this morning, but they can't really change the battlefield dynamic because unless you fly the drones in packs, almost in swarms, they can be picked off by the air defenses. In a sense, Russia just simply doesn't have enough supplies on the ground or in the air to be able to rely on these drones. Yeah. So, you know, does it start to give President Zelensky leverage that he needs to potentially get Putin to the negotiating table? We've heard this week, you know, that there's potentially the US might sit down and try and negotiate some sort of peace. Is this starting to look likely? I, I think it's a bit of a different dynamic, Bev, because, you know, the fundamental is Vladimir Putin's not going to go to the negotiating table to withdraw from Ukraine, mm -hmm. which is really what you have to have. That's a precondition. However, what it does is it changes the terms. If Putin says, I want to negotiate on the basis of the existing lines, in other words, let me have the territory that I took this year. Let me have Crimea and I'll talk to you. I mean, we saw Elon Musk, for what that's worth, going on Twitter and saying, well, that's a jolly good idea. Why don't we do it? Zelensky's going to be now, able to, with the backing of the international community, say that's a no-go. We want talks. We want discussions, but it is on the basis of Russian withdrawal. Let's start with that, Vlad. And the military situation bolsters that position. Yeah. If Russia, though, gets increasingly cornered, does the, this increase the threat of a nuclear attack? Well, I think, first of all, you, what you're seeing from the Ukrainians, and I think from the international community behind them, is a very calculated move here. And that is, look, we're not talking about a sudden offensive that sweeps through the Russian controlled areas, and that all of a sudden means that Crimea might fall. So there's a political as well as a military timing to this. But secondly, I'm not heading to the bunkers, Bev. And let me explain why. Vladimir Putin has threatened to use nuclear weapons throughout this conflict. Mm. I can go back to statements in the spring where he said, if NATO intervenes, look at the weapons I've got. He thumps his chest for domestic consumption. But when it comes to it, well, here's two factors. First of all, he uses a nuclear weapon that doesn't change the battlefield situation. It might eliminate a few Ukrainian troops, it might irradiate the battlefield, but it doesn't secure his forces control of the area. Secondly, it isolates him politically. Not even China or India, possibly North Korea, but except for them, no one's gonna support the use of nuclear weapons. And as we saw only 24 hours ago, less than 24 hours ago, the UN voting 143 to five not to recognize Putin's annexations of territory. If he uses nuclear weapons, he's further isolated. Yeah, that was such a significant vote in the end. Um, you know, Scott, there's always been this conversation about whether Western support or support from, you know, so many countries gets closer to the line where, in fact, Ukraine is not fighting this war on its own. It's making these countries active participants. What do you think about that argument? Look, all of us are participants in this. Mm. Vladimir Putin made us participants in this, not only when he attacked a neighboring country, not only when his military 
have carried out war crimes, including the killings of thousands of civilians. He made his participants because he threatened to go farther. In other words, to take on the entire international order. The question is how we've had that participation. So Australia gives military aid, but humanitarian aid. Japan does as well, the US, Europe. In other words, this is not the case that NATO is attacking poor Vlad on behalf of Ukraine. It is that Putin has drawn people into the defense of Ukraine through his miscalculation. Has he been miscalculation enough to start the beginning of the end for him? You need to ask the people of Russia, especially those who are close to Putin. Uh, what was significant after the damage of the Kerch Bridge, this vital link between Russian occupied Crimea and Russia last week, probably by Ukraine, what was significant was that Putin faced domestic criticism for the first time. Military analysts, what are you going to do? State commentators, what are you going to do? Putin responds, in part, what am I going to do by lobbing missiles? But what happens the next time we have a Ukrainian advance on the battlefield or the destruction of a vital Russian symbol? Then what does Putin do? I don't think he goes soon because he's neutralized most of his opposition. But the discontent around the Russian military, the Russian defense ministry, it is discontent with Putin. So people may sit on their hands rather than to continue giving him his, uh, give them, give Putin their support. Yeah. Always great to get your thoughts, uh, Scott. Thanks so much. Thank you, Beth.